Uh, maybe I can try and, and, and summarize my, my view on that. We have two distinct dangers coming out of the same technological tools. Uh, we have the, the easier danger to grasp, which is of extreme totalitarian regimes of a kind we haven't seen before. And this could happen in, in different, maybe not in the US, but in, in other countries, that these tools, uh, you say that they, they I mean, that, uh, that these are abuses. But in some countries, this could become the norm that you are living from the moment you are born in this system that constantly monitors and surveils you and constantly kind of manipulates you from, from a very early age to adopt particular ideas, views, habits, so forth, in a way which was never possible before. Mm -hmm. And this is like the full-fledged totalitarian dystopia, um, which could be so effective that people would not even resent it <laughs> because it, they will be completely aligned with uh, uh, with the the values or, or, or the ideals of, of the system. It's not 1984 where you need to torture people all the time. No, if you have agents inside their brain, you don't need the external secret police. So that's that's one danger. It's like the the the, the, the full fledged totalitarianism. Then in places like the U.S., the more immediate danger or or problem to think about is what is increasingly people refer to as surveillance capitalism, that you have these systems that constantly interact with you and, and come to, to know you, and it's all supposedly in your best interests to give you better recommendations and better advice. So it starts with recommendation for which movie to, to watch and, and where, where to go on vacation. But as the system becomes better, it gives you a recommendation on what to study at college. Uh, where to work, ultimately whom to marry, mm -hmm. who to vote for, which religion to join, like join a community. Like you have all these religious communities. This is the best religion for you, for your type of personality. Uh, Judaism, nah, it, it won't work for you. Go with Zen Buddhism. It's, it's, much, it's a much better fit for your personality. You would thank us in five years. You would look back and you say, this was an amazing recommendation. Thank you. I so, so much enjoy Zen Buddhism. And again, People will, it will feel that this is aligned with their own best interests. And, and the system improves over time. Yeah, there will be glitches. Not everybody will be happy all the time. But what does it mean that all the most important decisions in my life are being taken by an external algorithm? What does it mean in terms of human agency, in terms of, you know, the, the meaning of life? You know, mm -hmm. for, for thousands of years, humans tended to view life as a drama of decision-making. Like life is your, it's a journey, you reach an intersection after intersection, and you need to choose. Some decisions are small, like what to eat for breakfast, and some decisions are really big, like who, whom to marry. And all of, almost all of art and all of religion is about that. Like almost every, whether it's a Shakespeare tragedy or a Hollywood comedy, it's about the hero or heroine needing to make a big decision, to, to be or not to be, to marry X or to marry Y. And what does it mean to live in a world in which increasingly we rely on the recommendations of algorithms to make these decisions until we reach a point when we simply follow them all the time or most of the time? And they make good recommendations. I'm not saying that this is some abuse, some, some, something sinister. No, it's, they're good recommendations. But I'm just, we don't have a model for understanding what is the meaning of human life in such a situation. Well.